Hello, everybody, and welcome to HCAM Sports Talk Live. I'm your host, Tom Nappy. And right now, we're going to take a look back at some great memories from the Hopkinton Hillers 2020-2021 winter sports season. We have highlights, a few interviews thrown in there. Here's a look. Check it out. Sit back and enjoy. Before we get into the highlights and some of the great memories, let's take a look at our broadcast schedule this coming week. On Wednesday, February 10th, we have Hopkinton Hillers Boys Basketball versus Holliston. JV2 is at 3.30 p.m., followed by JV1 at 5 p.m., and then we have the varsity game at 6.30. Then on Thursday, February 11th, we have the Alpine Skiing Championships at 7 p.m., and before that, we have middle school basketball versus Middleborough at 4.30 p.m., then on Friday, February 12th, we have Hopkinton Hillers girls basketball versus Medway. We have JV1 at 5 p.m., followed by Varsity at 6.30 p.m. And this weekend, Saturday, February 13th, we have Hopkinton Hillers girls hockey as they take on Westwood at 5.40 p.m. Then on Sunday, February 14th, we have Hopkinton Hillers girls hockey and a makeup game against Medway at 3.40 p.m. And that is your Hillers winter broadcast schedule for this coming week. And now let's take a look at some of the highlights so far this season. Working out the logistics for the winter has proven challenging um, with each district handling it a little bit differently. Um, and in some cases, uh, also sport to sport. Um, so we've had a few schools in our league um, that have delayed the start of winter sports um, to varying dates in January. Um, since we were supposed to start games um, January 6th, when we returned from break, uh, we've had to adjust our league schedule a little bit. Uh, but again, the, the name of the game this year, right, is flexibility, just adapting, just trying to make the best of the situation. We're just trying to provide, you know, whatever opportunities we can, but making sure that they're safe. Um, you know, so we're, we're, uh, we're playing just the big schools, um, in boys and girls basketball and boys hockey. Um, there is no big, small, uh, breakdown in girls hockey. So we're just playing all other schools that have girls ice hockey. And then again, I mentioned there's some sports specific changes. So there's three schools. Uh, we are being one of them, uh, that did not have access to a pool. Um, so unfortunately we've had to delay, uh, swimming and diving to the fall two season, um, which was really unfortunate. Um, you know, we've really tried to avoid, creating situations where students would have to choose between sports. Um, you know, so we reached out to some other pool facilities uh, when we found out we would not have access to Keef, uh, Keef Tech's pool, which is what we traditionally use. And unfortunately, we just weren't able to find time. Um, you know, most pools already have locked in schedules, um, either with other high schools or private programs or lessons, whatever it might be. And there's no one was able to uh, add on another full high school, which was obviously unfortunate. So, um, so like I said, some of the schools in our league are doing swimming and diving and then we are not. Um, and then same thing with track and field. Um, the MIAA uh, moved track and field to the fall two season. Um, we felt very strongly that we wanted to offer winter track um, in its traditional season. Uh, we have a very large number of kids. Last year we had about 190 um students and to me that was 190 students that were going weren't going to have anything to do this winter um and so our coaching staff um has been amazing um we are practicing outdoors uh we're getting very creative um in, in what we can do uh and with the storm coming in we've started to talk about other things that we can do uh since they're gonna have uh, to get have, some snow suits i think right uh we'll do a little <laughs> snowshoe workout maybe um so uh, and we have about 120 students right now, um, and, and that number may go up um, as some of our teams uh, make make the difficult decisions that they have to make in terms of cuts. Um, so we have a large number of kids that even though we're practicing outdoors, still decided to come out. Um, but there's only five schools in the TVL that are doing uh, track and field during this winter season. The other seven have pushed it off. So again, there's a lot of different things from school to school and sometimes sport to sport, depending on facilities. Um, so it's, it's definitely more of a struggle 
in the sense of consistency and consensus than the fall was. We had a real strong consensus in the fall on what we were going to do. Um, being outdoors helped. Um, so it's a little bit more challenging in that respect this winter. And I want to ask you this question before I forget, because I always forget. Uh, so the girls hockey team this season, they'll also be at the New England Sports Center. Will they be on the same rank as the boys team? Yes, except for one game. But um, the difference okay. is, uh, and I assume you, you're probably thinking, Tom, of rink one. Yes. Which is the traditional game rink. So we're actually not playing our games in rink one this year. I knew it. Um, I knew it. <laughs> we are playing uh, all of our boys' games in rink three and almost all of our girls' games in rink three. Uh, one of their games is in rink four. Um, the reasoning for that is rink one, um, not to give too much information that people probably don't necessarily want to know about, but the bench area is confined by stands. Like right. there's no room to expand. And because of the EEA guidelines of having to have six feet of space between everyone in the bench area, we, we would have had to have a really small roster. Uh, we figured it out that we could probably fit 12 people in the bench, which would be 10 skaters and the two coaches. And then if you factored the six guys on the ice or girls on the ice, that means we could only carry a roster of 16 people if we use rink one. There's such a long layoff. Uh, the boys were really excited to be out there. And, uh, you know, they worked very, very hard uh, in both of those scrimmages. Um, for the most part, we're healthy. We, you know, we have uh, 12 players this year. Um, the Tri-Valley League has limited uh, the rosters to 12 per team because of COVID. Um, and right now we just have uh, one um, player, a sophomore, uh, Karosh Fatahe, who uh, ha has a deviated septum. So he had a surgery yesterday. So I wish him well and a speedy recovery. So he'll be back in a couple of weeks. So I look forward to uh, seeing him healthy again. So uh, how have the practices been? Um, have you had to divide up the team more than usual? And I always uh, figure that it must be pretty tough playing basketball in a mask. How is that going for everybody? <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely a, a very big adjustment for the kids. Um, and when they're off the court and they're not doing drills, they have to maintain social distancing. So just reminding um, high school kids that they have to stay six feet apart um, has been uh, something that we have to be super aware of this year. Um, and as far as wearing the masks go, I mean, it's definitely a challenge for them. Um, you know, I've spoken to a lot of coaches in the area, some of the college coaches to talk about what has worked for them, you know, and I was talking to, uh, the Holy Cross basketball coach, Brett Nelson, and he was telling me that his kids have had a lot of success, uh, wearing a type of, um, plastic piece, um, around their mouth. So it separates their mouth from the mask. So we're kind of investigating right now, figuring out what works best for our kids and uh, trying to figure it out. But it's definitely a challenge, but it's something that I keep telling the uh, team that everybody in every part of the uh, state is dealing with. So we're going to control what we can control and uh, mask wearing. I, I, I definitely can uh, sympathize with them. It's, it's, it's a challenge. Certainly is. Uh, no, no, coach, just, you have to wear. Coach, you have to wear master of the games. Yes. Yeah. How is that going to your affect your communication to your referees? <laughs> How is that going to work out? Because we know we get you on some great close-ups over the several several seasons where right. you might not agree with a call or you know yeah. you just want to get clarification. Uh, right. I don't know. What do you think? Think easier, less technical is what? <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it'll I think it's definitely gonna help me, Mike, because uh needless to say, uh a lot of people say that they can read my face very easily. You know, it might be more challenging for my players a little bit, but uh no, I think it's gonna help me out a little bit in, in that regards. You know, if uh if you have a, a comment for the official that might be of a constructive nature than uh, <laughs> under the mask, which will help out a little bit, I think. Is there any rule changes? I haven't heard of any, but uh, was there any uh, slight rule changes or anything like that? 
Yeah, so um, there's a few rule changes. Uh, the, the first one being there's no, no jump ball this year to start the game. So um, – I'm glad you told me that. Yeah, well, yeah I didn't know that. It, yeah. So it's going to be an inbound pass at half court? Yeah, it's going to be an inbound pass. Uh, the okay. first scrimmage we went to, uh, Brian Keefe lost it rock, paper, scissors against the kitchen <laughs> of airborne. So we're going to let him do rock, paper, scissors again. And then uh, at Bellingham, they flipped a coin. So, nice. uh, so there's no wow. no jump ball. It's nice that they mix that up, anyways. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then there is no baseline out of bounds plays this year, so um, everything's going to be taken out on the sideline. And uh. the person who's guarding the inbounder has to stay six feet away from <laughs> the pass. <laughs> Well, right, right, right. now next you're gonna tell me they killed your full court press. <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's the that's the uh, interesting thing, right? Like you can full, still yeah. press, you can still play everybody man to man once the game gets into action. So right, right. Um, it's, it's definitely unusual. I'm sure they have reasons behind it. In week one of the Hopkinton Hillers winter sports season, Hopkinton took on Norwood no defenders off uh, usually a bucket as laying it in is Elena Davies. In the JV girls basketball game, the Mustangs of Norwood had a 22-19 lead heading into the second half. Elena Davies helped get the offense going for the Hillers in the third quarter. Some water and then they're back out at it again, keeping the mojo moving. Nice finish there by Alexis Bruce. Over to Kane. Kane steps back, tries to launch a three. Good block there by Chorus. Moves it over to Dacey, drives in, up for the shot, and in she goes. Emma Dacey with six points for the Hillers. Having the lane. Over to the right corner, long two, got it. Elena Davies. Serene over to the right wing, up for three, off the glass, no good. And it is collected by Davies. Davies works it up the lane, up and in with the right hand. Elena Davies, 16 points on the night. Pulls the Hillers within four. Norwood outscored Hopkinton in the third quarter, 13 to 10, and the Hillers trailed 35 to 29 after three. But Elena Davies once again got things going in the fourth quarter. As it went off the defender, Jones lays it up and in. Big time layup by Shelby Jones, and the Hillers have a two point lead with 4.07 left to go, and a timeout called by Norwood. Go. Now they have to chip on this and sink it. Davies driving in. Up with the hook shot and in, plus the foul. Elena Davies, 20 points on the night. The Hillers defense held Norwood to two points in the quarter, while Hopkinton added 11 points and took the game 40 to 37. Elena Davies had a team high 21 points in the game. Old Bryce. Trying to feed it up top, stolen away. Quick break for the Hillers to the rack. Off the glass and in goes Lulu Murphy and she draws the contact. The second game this past Friday night was the Varsity Girls game. It was a back and forth first half. The Hillers led after the first two quarters, 20 to 19. Show up to Hedstrom. Great defensive effort by the Hillers. Murphy. Feeds it out to Cho, up for three. Count it! Lauren wow. Cho knocking it down. Oh boy. 16 to six Hillers. Hopkinton added another 12 points in the third quarter and outscored Norwood 12 to 10 to increase their lead to three points. Here comes Cho. Round the defender. Good feed to the block. Up and in, Fossbender. The fourth quarter, however, was all Norwood. They outscored Hopkinton 9-4 and would end up taking the game 38-36. Lauren Cho had a team-high 12 points for the Hillers, while Kiki Fossbender added 8 points. Lexi Trendle also pitched in with 9 points of her own. After Hillers Varsity Boys Hockey opened their season in Norwood with a 5-1 win, the Mustangs would get some revenge. Carried along the backboards. Now there's a shot and it's put in. That is going to be Brian Mateo with the goal. 
this season, hockey is playing two 22-minute, 30-second halves rather than 15-minute periods. And the Mustangs poured it on in the first half, netting six goals. On the face off, it's Mira and Dittmir. So back over to Tolman. He sends it over to the far side. There's a shot and a goal by Kyle Ledger. Hopkinton did have one of their own goals with 129 left to go in the first. Top of the circle, there's a shot and it's in! In the five hole goes Joe Carrazza! Norwood added two more goals in the second half and took the game 8-1. to one. Going Smith to the right block. Around the horn they go up to Wyatt, launches a three and he knocks it down. How about that, a pair of field goals for Wyatt Stevens, the sophomore. The Hopkinton JV boys met up with Norwood this past Sunday. Wyatt Stevens dropped nine points in the first quarter to help Hopkinton take a 14-7 lead. We'll have a, we have a whole lot of fun on that show, talking about everything going on locally and nationally as well. Yeah, I don't think I did too well on my uh, doing too well on my picks. We'll have to take a look. Up for three and good is Kyle Bertucci Bissonette. Stevens dropped another 10 points in the second quarter as Hopkinton knocked down 22 points and took a 36 to 18 lead into the second half. Left corner, good ball distribution there by the Hillers. Desenroth up for the shot, no good. Swatted back out by Peters to Desenroth. Down to the left corner, up and in goes Wyatt Stevens. A long two from the corner. Norwood outscored Hopkinton in the second half, but it would not be enough. The Hillers would take the game 55-47. to Wyatt Stevens scored a team-high 21 points for the Hillers. Tremendous run, and we have a steal by Matt Cooper. Casper nice. over to Sarapusco in the corner. Up to Cooper. Hands it back over to Keith. Drives the lane up with the right hand. And it's pulled down by DiPietro for the putback. He goes up and in, plus the foul, and and one. In the varsity game, Hopkinton cruised for 20 points in the first quarter versus Norwood. Over to Marazzini, he'll launch a three and knock it down. Back and forth we go. The Hillers outscored Norwood in the second quarter, 16 to 12. Anthony DiPietro chipped in for several points in the quarter. Pressure by the Mustangs. Paharic, Keith, back to Paharic. Over to Casper for three, no, a little short there, but up and in goes DiPietro. Karosh Fatahi knocked down a couple of field goals in the third quarter as both teams put up 13 points apiece. Second for Norwood. Driving down, Fatahi around the defender, up and in with the right hand. Josh Sarapusco exploded for 10 fourth quarter points. Driving in, great feed to Sarapusco, and Sarapusco, the senior, finishes once again. The Hillers took the game 70 to 60. Josh Sarapusco had a team high 17 points. Anthony DiPietro dropped 13 points, and the Hillers' victory to split the series with Norwood at one game apiece. Hello, everybody. You are tuned into HCAM Sports Talk Live. And joining us on the program, we have head coach of Hopkinton Hillers Girls Varsity Basketball, Mike Greco. And we also have the captains with us, Millie Sensini, Caroline Connell, and Alulu Murphy. How's everyone doing? Good. How are you? Very good. So Very this to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, so the season is underway, and uh, we hope that it'll stay underway. Uh, but you have a couple games under your belt. And, uh, Coach, uh, how has it been coaching this team so far and getting ready in uh, this very strange situation with the pandemic, of course? 
uh, how's everything been? And uh, how's it been making some of the adjustments such as uh, practicing and playing in the masks and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, um, honestly, we're it's been great. Um, we're just, I think, really happy to even have a season. Um, we know that we're fortunate enough to be in a district where, you know, the um, administration is allowing us to play and, you know, providing us the resources we need to get out there. Uh, I can't say enough positive things about the group of girls I've got this year. Um, they work hard. They're committed. Um, they have been, uh, you know, we, we returned 11 players, all 11 players, as a matter of fact. And so it's really been the same kind of core for several years now. Um, so the chemistry has been off the charts and um, there's been, you know, some challenges to deal with and some logistics that we've had to adjust to, but, you know, once, once practice starts or once the game starts, it really does just feel like basketball again. And so it's, it's been really great to be out there. We'll start off uh, with Millie. How has your experience been uh, getting ready for the season? And I can only imagine it must be uh, tough playing with the masks, uh, but how, how's it been so far? Um, yeah, it's definitely different, um, especially my mask, like you said. Um, and there's also a lot of new guidelines that we have to follow. But by this point, I think we've pretty much gotten used to it. Um, but other than that, practices have been fun. Um, the team has a really special bond, which is definitely important. Um, but given the circumstances we have now, um, I'm just hoping we get back on the court um, as soon as possible. Because since the season is shorter this year, um, we're coming close to an end. Um, but we're definitely lucky to actually have a season this year. So. And Caroline, how has your uh, experience been uh, so far this season? And you must be excited to be back out there. Yeah, um, I've definitely been really excited. Like Millie said, um, we're just really lucky that we actually get to play and we've been very appreciative. And something that coach says like every day in practice and at every game is that we really don't know how many games and practices we're guaranteed to have. So I think everyone really does take that to heart and especially the seniors. It's hard knowing it's like our last season, but um, we really do take it to heart and work hard and practice every day and push each other and compete. And Lulu, how has your experience been? Um, I'm sure you're happy to be uh, back out there. Yeah, it's definitely nice to play with everyone again. And it's definitely easier since we did return everybody. So it, it, it definitely is a little harder to like learn new things like with the mass and with like the new guidelines. But I think it definitely helps that like we all have already played together and everything. And uh, coach, uh, what's been the toughest transition for you this year? I know there hasn't been uh, too many rule changes, but are there any uh, procedures in practice or game procedures that have taken a bit of getting used to? I'd imagine, uh, a procedure change such as the limited halftime breaks uh, must yep. be a little more difficult for you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the biggest the, the biggest things in the game have been, you know, there's no more baseline out of bounds plays and they're limiting the number of players, you know, that are in the lane on a free throw. Um, you know, so that's been a, been a minor adjustment, but I, I think you you nailed it when. You know, you mentioned that there's no halftime, there's no more pregame real, you know, pregame talk and things like that. So it's kind of, we show up, we get off the bus, we stretch and we play, you know, and I'm sure the kids like it because they don't have to listen to me give a, you know, 10, 15 minute spiel on all the things we want to do that night. But um, that's been a little bit of an adjustment. So it's been, you know, a lot more preparing and practice the day before. And uh, we'll go around the table to the players here. Um, so Millie, uh, what are some of the uh, things that you've been working on uh, in the preseason and uh, what are some of your goals uh, for this season uh, to get your uh, game a little bit better? Um, I've definitely been working a lot on my shooting and ball handling and also my confidence. Um, this year, um, I feel like, especially during the beginning of the season, my confidence has gone up a little bit um, and I hope to stay that way through the rest of the season. So. And Caroline, how about you? Any goals this season or things that you're hoping to accomplish? Um, yeah, I would say the same thing with Millie. Um, definitely confidence is a big one. Um, the past few years, our team has kind of been like rebuilding. And um, like Coach says, he's seen like a big difference in our confidence. And you can just see it in the way we're playing. And I 
think that kind of like the energy and just supporting each other and even going through everything that we're going through with the pandemic and stuff, I think it just kind of makes us stronger and like appreciate each other more. And Lulu, how about you? Um, what are some of the things that you're uh, hoping to accomplish uh, this season? Some of the things you've been working on? Um, definitely decision making will be one of them and just like limiting turnovers and kind of just distributing the ball to everyone, I guess. Excellent. Um, so coach, uh, I know it's a shortened season, uh, but you have a lot of great returning players to this team. And it's certainly unfortunate that there's no postseason or anything like that, because I think this team could uh, potentially make a big run. But uh, what's it been like uh, working with this group this season and dealing with all the uh, obstacles that uh, you've had to deal with to be able to play this year? Honestly, the, the obstacles have been um, have been such a small piece of it. Um, this, this has been a, a great group to work with this year. Um, you know, like the girls have said, we returned, you know, almost our entire group from last year. Um, so it's, it's a bunch of players that I've had since they were all freshmen and sophomores. And they have shown such tremendous growth, um, you know, certainly from, from two years ago, but, you know, especially from last year where, you know, I, I think that, you know, they're, they're playing with so much more confidence. Um, the ball is moving, you know, on, on offense so much more smoothly. Um, their, their, their communication and their, their trust in each other uh, is so evident. These girls spend so much time together, not just during the season, but even, you know, even off the season, um, that, you know, the, the, the chemistry is so evident. You can, you can see it really spill over on the court. So uh, I, I honestly, I couldn't ask for a, a better group. Kicks over to Hyman, up for the shot and good. Hiller's boys basketball took on Westwood on Tuesday, January 12th. In the JV game, Wyatt Stevens dropped 23 points for the Hillers. Court pressure by the Hillers here in the closing seconds of the half. Stolen away by White Stevens to the bucket. And yes, it'll fall through. Nice steal there. Buzzer beater, a little short. And at the end of two, it's Westwood 25, the Hillers 20. Sam Pantera added 15 points. Boy, has this game turned. Pantera knocks down a three. Just what the doctor ordered for the Hillers. The Hillers scored a whopping 26 points in the third quarter to take a 46-39 lead heading into the fourth. It is a Westwood rebound put back, no good there, and the Hillers have it off the Miss Robertson shot. And here comes Hopkinton, a pass over the corner, knocking down the three, Wyatt Stevens. Wyatt Stevens knocked down a trifecta of threes in the third quarter. Players gathering close to each other, Kane up for the lane, no good. Also, the defender has to be six feet away from the inbounder. Up for three, and swishing it right through Wyatt Stevens. Hiller's JV ended up taking the game 58 to 51 over Westwood. Around the defender and finds Fatahi. Fatahi up and oh. good, plus the foul. In the varsity game, James McGowan knocked down four three-point buckets and five field goals overall to help Westwood outscore Hopkinton in the quarter 16-13. Trailing 36-29 heading into the third quarter, the Hillers responded with 23 points and outscored Westwood 23-20 to cut the Westwood lead down to four points heading into the final eight minutes. Trying to work his way by McGowan. Here he goes. Pass to the corner. DiPietro for three. Off the rim. No good. Keefe with the rebound and the putback and in. Westwood, however, outscored Hopkinton in the fourth quarter 16 to 10 and took the game 72 to 62. On Wednesday, January 13th, Hiller's Varsity Hockey took the ice to take on the Wolverines of Westwood, looking to rebound from an 8-1 loss the previous week versus Norwood. But you don't see it too often. Not too, too often, though. No. There's a shot, and that is in! Toko with the goal! 
right off the post, and in it goes with 17.08 left to go in the first half, and the Hillers take the one nothing lead. Sheamus, we'll wrap it back around Mara. Leaves it out, there's a shot and a goal! Joe Carazza! Hillers scored two goals in the first half. Westwood added one of their own with under two minutes left to make it a two to one game. It certainly is. Racing up the near side, Horseball. Leaves it out, can someone get there? There's a shot and that is in! The Wolverines respond. Paul Dyson with the goal. Hopkinton dominated the second half, silencing Westwood and adding three Hiller goals. Mira up against Fahey. Carrazza sends it back to Jarrett. Now to Carrazza. Leaves it out for Berman. Wrist their goal! Mike Berman! What a beauty of a shot that was from Mike Berman. And Carrazzo with another assist. Along the corner. Here comes Mira. Leaves it for Carrazza. Racing in. There's a shot and a goal! What a beauty! Joe Carrazza, the sophomore! Over to Faye. Toko to the empty net, and it's in! Jeff Toko with the finisher. The Hillers took the win over Westwood 5-1 to one and improved to two wins and one loss on the season. Westwood fell to 2-1 and one overall. This past Wednesday, Hillers Alpine Ski also hit the slopes with a number of different schools. Now, it looks like the snow is holding up pretty well. I mean, I see a few deep ruts um, developing mid-hill. I can't obviously see up over the hill. Um, so I do expect to see, you know, you know, some improvement in times between first and second runs. Yeah, but a couple of seconds. Oh, no, it'll be, we're talking, we're talking, tenth, if you can improve by a tenth of a second, that's a that's a significant oh, really? improvement. Okay. Yeah. Ski racing is is a game of hundredths of a second. Now from down here, from this angle, the slope looks fairly flat. Is it, or are there dips and such that we aren't seeing? No, here? not really. It's it's relatively flat. It's it's well, it's it's uh you know it's a consistent okay. Uh, a uh, consistent slope, I guess, is what I would call it. Sure. Um, and that's great, right? Because for those folks who have not, you know, had a lot of formal training, mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot of the intimidation away and really, you know, makes it more fun. Both the Hillers ski teams finished second place in their first meeting of the season. This was the best team finish for the girls in program history. Kate Barry was second, Kiara Niss fifth, Libby Herlihy was sixth to lead the girls, while Jackson Schlusel was first for the boys, Jake LaRoche was fifth, and Cameron Hanna was seventh for the Hiller Boys Alpine Ski Team. Uh, things are going pretty well. Uh, you know, we had a little shutdown for a little bit there, but we're uh, back in action and looking forward to our first game in a couple weeks on Wednesday. Uh, the team's doing pretty well, two and one so far. Um, a good win, a tough loss, and a good win. So hopefully we're, we're trending more with the good wins. Absolutely. It was a great win uh, in your last game against uh, Westwood. And you had a good win in one of the games against uh, Norwood as well. Uh, but I thought after a tough eight to one loss against Norwood, it was, it was a great rebound win against a talented uh, Westwood team. Uh, can you talk about the uh, talent on the team this year? I know you lost some key pieces from last year's roster, but uh, I think this team is, has some great talent and uh, can certainly do some uh, good things for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, there's definitely been an adjustment period, you know, losing some, you know, some very, very talented players, you know, obviously uh, 
top scorer of all time. Um, you know, I, I would say we probably had the best line in the state last year um, as far as, you know, Division two and three with, uh, with that senior group there. But uh, some kids have definitely stepped up this year. And some, a lot of kids have a lot of different roles, more expanded roles. And, you know, they've, they've, they've done a good job so far. And we just need to, you know, the kids come to the rink every day, you know, working hard to get better. And, you know, you never know what, what's going to happen after a loss like that eight to one loss that we had there. And, um, you know, they turn the page the next day in practice and kids are ready to go in that next game. And I was very, very proud of that response. Like, like you said, that was a great response. It certainly was. Uh, now, I know we had this little two week pause on the season, uh, but games should be happening this week. I can't. Well, I can't imagine the team was able to practice too much. Did you give them any homework to do to get ready for the rest of the season? Yeah, they. I asked them to watch the Westwood film and uh, put, put some pointers out there, some things to look at specifically, uh, you know, just what we're doing on the four checks, um, you know, D-zone coverage, things like that. Uh, how can we improve the power play? Also gave them some off-ice uh, off training to do. I put together a couple of workouts for them. And... Um, We'll see today. Hopefully, we'll come back in some good shape. You know, we're right back on the ice today, so we got to get a lot of touches and get those hands back together, get the feet going again, and also work teams. You know, the, the team concept work in the second half of the practice because we'll be right down in Benfield in two days, so it's going to come pretty quick. So, uh, so against uh, Westwood, uh, Colin Norad was tremendous in net. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like to coach him? Uh, throughout his Hiller's career and how he has come along throughout his years in a Hiller's uniform? Uh, yeah, what a, what, a nice, uh, what a nice story that is, uh, Colin. He, you know, last year, I, you know, I was looking ahead and saw that we didn't really have much in the pipeline for goaltenders. And uh, he was a JV player for two years as a forward. I played a little bit of D2. And uh, before the season started, I kind of identified him because he's a strong lacrosse goaltender as someone that I just wanted to throw it out at him, asked him if he wanted to play some goalie. And um, he, you know, he took the challenge, which I was you know, very happy that we, we definitely needed somebody coming into this year, uh, as we only have two goaltenders in the whole system. And he's done a tremendous job. His improvement from last year, this year is remarkable, especially, you know, thinking about, you know, the shutdown last spring where, you know, I mean, I know that's his lacrosse time, but he couldn't really get in the ice to do like you know, any of the goalie clinics and things like that. Uh, but once he was able to get in the ice this fall, uh, he, I know he was doing it. I know our other goaltender, uh, Jack Lang, was also there with him um, doing, doing a lot of the, the goalie clinics and things like that. And uh, just showed, just improved so much uh, compared to last year where he was. Obviously, it was his first time playing goalie last year. Um, but he's, uh, he's a nice little groove right now. And, uh, you know, really... Just really, really good teammate for everybody. Really hard worker. Um, doesn't say much, but when he speaks, you know, people listen because, you know, he's one of those types of kids that you, know, you, you, you really want to listen to those kids that really like put the effort in and, you know, do the right things. And he's one of those kids. And, you know, he's going to be going to Springfield College next year to play lacrosse. And uh, really, really happy for him that he got into his first choice. And uh, like I said, Good success story for Colin, that's for sure. On Tuesday, January 26th, Hopkinton Hillers girls varsity basketball battled Holliston. In the first quarter, the Hillers had four different point scorers and outscored the Panthers 15 to eight. Driving in, up and in she goes, Kiki Fossbender. Fossbender drives the floor, feeds the wing, Edstrom. Drives in to the block, up and in. Joe feeds it out, Lulu for three. Count it, knocks oh. it down. She has five points so far tonight. In the second quarter, Kiki Fossbender and Maggie Hedstrom added six points each. Lauren Cho added eight points to help the Hillers outscore Holliston 23 to 11 in the quarter and take a 38 to 19 lead into the half. And now we're going to have a steal. Here comes Cho to the bucket. Up, count it. Lauren Cho takes it to the house. Back to Lulu. You got Maggie and Carly Hedstrom both in the game. Lulu to Maggie. Up for three. Got it. Swish. 
Nothing but net. 28 to 11 Hillers. Over to Fossbender. Back to Cho for three. Got it. Tony Hill working the low post. Cho over to Millie. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Cho over to Maggie Hedstrom. Up for three. Swishes it right through. In the third quarter, Kiki Fossbender, Lauren Cho, Maggie Hedstrom, and Lulu Murphy all contributed in a 15 to 10 quarter to up the lead to 53 to 29. Lulu pulls up, turns it around to Fossbender, back to Lulu. And Maggie, and Hiller's gonna take their time on their possessions. They don't have to rush shots here with a big lead as Maggie knocks down a three. The Hillers' lead would prove to be too much for Holliston to come back from, and Hopkinton took the game 57 to 37. Lauren Cho had a team leading 14 points, while Kiki Fosbetter added 13 points, and Maggie Hedstrom added 12. The Hillers improved to three wins and one loss overall. Now it's Lulu. Leads it to Ainelli. Now swipes it back. Driving in is Kane up and in. And the freshman has her first points in a varsity uniform. And here comes Cataldo. Here's Cataldo working her way up the ice towards the net. Takes the shot. And look at that. Norwood draws first blood to make it one to nothing. On Wednesday, January 27th, Hillers Dover Sherborne. Co-op Varsity Girls Hockey played their first home game of the season versus Norwood. The Mustangs of Norwood netted a goal 30 seconds in to the first half. That would be the only goal until Norwood added another goal with 1839 left in the second half. Stolen away by Nauman. There's a shot and it gets away from McCluskey and in it goes. A short-handed goal for the Norwood Mustangs. McCluskey thought she had that one wrapped up, but it squirted out of her grasp and ends up in the net. The Mustangs of Norwood took the game two to nothing. The Hillers Alpine Ski Team also hosted a meet last Thursday. They finished in second place overall. Here's a look at some of the contest. Good be Kate. Eight oh one. Okay, so yeah, that's Kate coming down the girls' course. Yep. Yep. Kate is a four-year team member and uh, a second-year captain. There she goes. Nicely done, right. Kate. Twenty-four seventy-four. Here comes Jackson. There's Jackson. Go speed racer. Boom. Nice. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Well done. We have the Hopkinton Hillers Alpine Ski Team, and uh, we have the captains joining us as well as the coaches. So let's go around the table and we'll have everyone introduce themselves and talk about what they do on the team. We'll start off with Nancy. Hi, I'm Coach Nancy. I have been the head coach of the Hopkinton Ski Team for five years, and I work with new racers and advanced racers every winter to see how far we can push it and how fast we can get on the hill. Terrific. Uh, and how about Daniel? Hi, this is Dan Barry. I'm the assistant coach. I help out Nancy. I've been working side by side with Nancy since the team formed uh, five years ago. And uh, I help Nancy sort of optimize the time on the hill for the kids so that the racers are getting the best out of their training time on the hill and help coordination on the races as well. Excellent. And um, how about C. Barry? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Kate. I'm a senior at Hoppington High School, and this is my second year being a captain um, on the ski team. Terrific. Uh, Jackson. Hi, I'm Jackson. I'm one of three captains, first year captain, four-year racer for high school, and... I'm excited to be on snow. Terrific. And last but not least, Tori. 
Hi, I'm Tori. I'm a junior, and this is my second year on the team, and I'm a captain this year. Excellent. So uh, first off to um, the captains out there, how long have you been skiing for? Uh, what got you into skiing? Um, just talk about your background in uh, skiing a little bit. Uh, we'll start off with Kate. Um, I have been skiing for pretty much as long as I can remember. Um, I got into skiing um, because my dad, he was a skier um, when he grew up and through his life. So that's how I got into skiing. Um, and then I got into ski racing at a pretty young age as well. And then I just stuck with it all these years. Terrific. How about you, Jackson? Uh, pretty much after I started walking, my mom taught me how to ski. Uh, true story, NASCAR. And then I kind of, we moved to New England. There's not very good snow here. So we decided the best way to maintain skiing was to join racing. So around six or seven, I joined the Wachusa Mountain Race Team. And then as soon as I entered high school, the new team was starting up and I thought it was a great opportunity to combine my love of high school sports with my love of skiing. All right. How about Tori? Um, so my story is a little bit different. I was a swimmer for a really long time and I had skied recreationally and for fun um, since I was pretty little. But um, after my freshman year swimming for the high school swim team, I decided that I was getting a little bored with swimming. So Nancy encouraged me to join the ski team and I'm back this year and I'm really loving it. Terrific. All right. Well, um, this ski program just got started up recently uh, for the coaches. Could you talk about the history of the program a little bit and how it ended up getting started? Sure. Dan and I have been around since the uh, first idea of having a ski team for high school. Um, we had a bunch of parents from uh, Wachusett mountain race team in the area. And we had little ones at the time. And we thought it would be fun when they got big enough for high school that it would be great to have a high school ski program. So we started pursuing what that would mean and how to start one. And it was about a three year um, process of learning how to start a high school team with MIAA. We went to many meetings, talked to a lot of uh, administrators, talked to a lot of the leagues around the area to find out if we could be a good fit and what it would take to start a team. Um, Hopkinton um, worked through the process with us and five years ago we got the green light from them and we got a green light from our league and um, ski ward and we just started rolling from there. Um, I've been coaching for about 10 years now so it was an easy fit to help out and get a coach for the high school and work with these kids from all different backgrounds to give them a winter sport that's outside the building and with a lot of fresh air around. This past Friday, January 29th, the Hopkinton Hillers girls varsity basketball team took on Dedham and celebrated the five seniors on their roster. Here's a look at the pregame Senior Day festivities. First, we'd also like to recognize Dedham's three seniors. If you'd just like to stand, number 14, Melissa Elliott. Number 20, Kara Bullett. And number 24, Lady Turner. Congratulations, Joseph. And now for the Hopkinton seniors. First, Kylie Hardbrook. And her guests, Kristen, her mother, Mike, her father, and Abby, her sister.
Our next senior is one of our captains, Lulu Murphy. And her guest, her mother Tracy, her father Kevin, her brother Josh, sister Emma, and grandmother Betty. Our next senior, also a captain, Millie Sinsenny, and her guest, her mother Mary, her father Scott, her sister Annabelle, and brother Ethan. And last, but not least, is our final senior captain, Caroline Connell, and her guest, her mom, Melissa, and her dad, Mike. Congratulations, ladies. Both teams put up 12 points in the first quarter. Carly and Maggie Hedstrom each knocked down a three-point field goal. Hedstrom on the entry. Over to Lulu. The kick out to the corner, up for three, got it. Maggie Hedstrom knocks it down. Pretty good arm there by Delaney Turner. Cho feeds it out to the corner, up for three, and knocking it down is Carly Hedstrom. In the second quarter, Lauren Cho put up eight points, including a pair of threes to help the Hillers outscore Dedham 16-7 and take a 28-19 lead into the halftime break. Well, that might have just been a contact stoppage. Too many players in the same area. Cho for three. Got it. Swishes it right through. There goes Maggie to Cho for three. Count it, Lauren Cho feeling it. In the third quarter, more effective defensive pressure by the Hillers and a three point field goal from three different players helped them add to their lead. There, and it's collected by Lulu, nice rebound. Kiki driving in up from the block, air ball. Good rebound by Trendle, up top now and Lulu knocks it down. Joe leads it out to Lulu. Now up top, Maggie for three. Got it. Swishes it through. Her second three-point bucket of the game. 12-point game. Joe over to Fossbender for three. Yes. They outscored Dedham 11-7 to take a 39-26 lead into the final quarter. In the fourth quarter, Kiki Fossbender added eight points. Comes Hopkinson up court, Lulu with possession. Edstrom over Trendle, now Lulu. Fossbender for three, knocks it down. They could just wait for a good opportunity. Fossbender for three, and I'd say that was a good opportunity as she knocks it down. The Hillers outscored Dedham in the frame 12 to 11 and took the game 56 to 37. Kiki Fossbender had a team leading 21 points. While Lauren Cho added 12 points, Hopkinton improved to four and one overall. After Medfield shut down sports for the week, Bellingham picked up the challenge against the Hillers boys hockey team this past Saturday. Prior to the game, both teams had a moment of silence for injured Bishop Fian player, A.J. Quetta. Please join us at the Hopkinson Hillers and Bellingham as well as all the players, coaches, staff, and family wish a speedy recovery to Bishop Fian Sr., A.J. Quetta. Thanks, guys. Have a great game. 
Hopkinton took control early, netting five goals in the first half. And now taking over, that's Swain looking for a shot there. Good defense in front of the net. And Mara going to get to the puck. Here he goes on a break to the net. Shot and a goal! Habit Mara makes it 1 0 Hillers. Less than a minute into action. 25 seconds into action to be exact. Fast start. Toko sends it over to the near side. There's a shot. Out in front of the net, and it's a loose puck. And was that put in? Yes, it was. And that is going to be Ryan Title with the goal. Ryan Title makes it 2 to nothing with 19-17 left to go in the first half. Aiden Walsh on the assist. Over to Berman. And that nice pass over to Berman. That went in. Wow, what a shot by Mike Berman. Wow. Great for the blue light. And you can give Cam Jarrett the assist. And he didn't expect that to go in, but he found the seam and put it through with 3.24 left to make it 3 to nothing. Hillers. Sends it out to Toko. Toko looking for a shot. Sends it over to Jarrett, and Jarrett puts it in. A beauty of a setup for Jarrett by Jeff Toko. And it's 4 nothing. Hillers. Go for a tougher shot. And here comes Toko looking for a shot, and he puts it in. Jeff Toko goes right side top corner and makes it five to nothing. And that goal comes with one second left in the first half. Five to nothing after one and the Hillers added another goal in the second half. And now racing up the ice on a wide open break. Tyler Morris, he'll leave it behind. And the shot by Moore and that's it. Andrew Moore makes it six to nothing, Hillers. And a great assist by Tyler Morse. Hopkinton took the game six to nothing and improved to three wins and one loss overall. On Thursday, January 28th, Hillers Alpine Ski had another successful competition. Here's a look. The protest video evidence is admissible. All right, Kate, let's see what you got. Beautiful through the flush, back to the rhythm, hit that delay, bring it on in. Push, push, nice, well done. Fantastic, that is the fastest time of the night on the girls course, without a quit, without a doubt. Alpine Ski had a big night as the boys won for the first time in the program's history and the girls took second place. Kate Barry finished first overall Libby Herlehigh finished fourth, Clara Niss finished fifth, Gabriella Siri finished 16th to lead the girls. As far as the boys, Jackson Schlusel finished first, Cameron Hanna finished second, Jake Lakosh finished sixth, and Nathan Foster finished 10th to lead the boys. Congratulations on the first first place finish in program history to the boys alpine ski team we want to thank you for joining us on hcam sports talk live don't forget you can catch the show every wednesday at 3 p.m for everyone at hcam i'm tom nappy take care enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk to you again soon